Hello everyone, it's Trina here from thereisacardforthat.ca and today I'm going to be making a magic color slider card using Lawn Fawn stamps and obviously their dies. Um, I think that this candy apple one was actually meant to be Halloween, but I'm using it for Christmas. <laughs> That's why not, right? Like if you can get more out of your stamps, you should go ahead and do that. So to save a little bit of time, um, I did all of my die cutting for the pieces prior to filming, just so I was a little more organized. Um, so I cut the main part of the mechanism out of 110 pound cardstock, same cardstock I use for all my Copa coloring, my card bases, absolutely everything. And uh, I'm using the rectangle window. And I had traced inside the window with a pencil very lightly, just so that I knew where I would do my stamping, right on the bottom part of the um, like on the back of the mechanism. So I stamped the candy apple image with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because we're going to be doing some Copic coloring. And then I cut a piece of acetate and I'm going to stamp that again, but this time with stays on. Um, you can't use Memento or dye inks or even pigment inks I found on acetate because it's not porous, so it doesn't dry. Um, the stays on ink does. It's a solvent based ink and it smells funky, so don't breathe it in. <laughs> it reminds me of um, almond cake. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to stamp that twice onto the acetate and then I'm going to set that aside uh, so I can finish stamping the apples in the background because the slider is going to reveal more of the scene and I only wanted just the little apple on the front like you saw in the picture at the beginning and you'll see again um, at the end and obviously throughout the course of this. So everything is stamped with memento right on the back of the mechanism for that. I'm going to do some Copic coloring and so I had cut a mask previously so that these two apples would look like they were behind the apple in the front. I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to realize I didn't do my sentiment <laughs> and so I'm going to need to do that. I'm going to start erasing my pencil lines. Um, as long as you're very careful you can erase pretty quickly over top of the uh, memento ink it dries quite quickly and right about here I'm gonna go oh crap <laughs> you need a greeting and without those lines I won't know exactly where I can put my greeting so I'm gonna put it back into my misty and I'm going to use the you are the caramel apple of my eye from the same stamp set and I'm going to realize my whole greeting doesn't fit because of how I positioned my apples so I'm going to put it the last part of it at the bottom and I had already raised those lines so now I have to close my mechanism so I can line it up properly and try not to get anything um, where it's not supposed to go like I don't want any of my stamping on the outside of my neck my mechanism along like the little stitched frame I just want it all underneath and again that's stamped with the memento tuxedo black ink twice just so that it's nice and crisp and bold and then I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to erase the rest of my pencil lines. Um, I don't think, like if you had forgotten to erase your pencil lines in, in this case, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Um, the slider, it all fits quite tightly together. So if you do miss it, it's not a huge deal. Just keep in mind that once that pencil is under ink, whether it's Distress Ink or your Copics, that pencil is trapped there forever. So if it's super important, make sure you erase your pencil. I'm using Candied Apple Distress Ink, just sponging along the outside. I had considered doing this out of uh, patterned paper, but I didn't have a red that I really, really liked. And I had also die cut a little tab to go at the top and I just pounced on a bunch of the same candy apple ink. I wanted it very green and red, very traditional Christmas. And then we're gonna go ahead and start coloring with the Copic markers. So all of the caramel is colored with E35, E34, and E33. I'm just going from darkest to lightest, starting where I want my shadows, and then blending out with my medium color, and then going back again with my lightest color to blend it out. And then on some of them, I do go back 
a second time with my darkest color, the E35, to deepen that more. Um, I do have a lot of Copic colors, but I don't have all the Copic colors. So when it comes to things like the caramel, because this is typically like my teddy bear combination go-to, um, it wasn't as caramel-y as I would have liked. And my plan originally was to color all of the apples with my Copics and then go back with my white gel pen and add um, like those highlight lines and little dots like just for extra highlight and super definition because it makes it super cute. And I was also going to add a little winky face to the front and I totally forgot both of those things. And once it's all sealed up, I was not going to run the risk of unsealing it in order to do that. So lesson learned, right? I mean, we all go in with a plan and sometimes that plan doesn't work out. Um, had I not mentioned anything, you probably wouldn't have noticed and I think it'd be okay. Um, so I decided to do the two side apples as green apples and I really ended up liking this, this color conversation combination. Um, I had wanted originally to go with um, like a Golden Delicious, uh, but they ended up being more of like a Granny Smith. And I think the colors ended up working out really well. The YG25, YG03, and YG01. Um, I was really, really happy after I colored that first apple with just how apple-y <laughs> these green apples looked. How many times do you think I can say apple throughout this card? <laughs> I don't know, but it'll be a lot. For the red apple, I'm going to go with R37, R27, and R17. Um, they're not very close number-wise, but I have found, and you will find in other people's craft videos, that if the last number in your Copic marker, so in this case, 7, 37, 27, 17, um, is the same, they do tend to blend quite well. And I wasn't sure about that, but turns out worked out great for the apples. The sticks, I wanted white, like the, um, like cake pop sticks instead of a popsicle stick, uh, just because I didn't want a lot, a lot of brown other than the caramel, of course. So for those, I just did C1 and C0 just to give it a highlight. And then the shadows, of course, because I just can't have my apples floating in the middle of nowhere. That <laughs> would be ridiculous. Um, you know, for a candy apple card. <laughs> it's W3 and W1. And then just to add a touch of color to the background, I used B000 behind the apples. And you know what? In the pictures, you can't even see it. In real life, you can kind of see it. It's it's sort of there, but in the pictures, you can't you can't see it at all. So here I am lining up my acetate over top of the stamped images to ensure that it's they're lined up properly, right? Because when you move the slider mechanism up, you don't want like a double stamp line. So I just use a piece of sticky note paper to tack that down. I put one eighth score tape around the window and then you just close it like a book and it works out really well. I'm going to attach the top taggy piece of this just using the dollar store tape runner. Same one I've been using for quite some time now. I've talked about it in my other videos. It's like a dollar twenty-five for a whole bunch of feet. I don't even know how many feet, but lots and it's great. It lasts a really long time. And then you just slide that through the line that is cut. The die has the little cut line there to begin with. And then you have this track piece. Um, so I had previously put the eighth inch score tape on both sides of the track piece. And I removed the bottom piece completely, but I only removed a little bit from the sides and then bent that over so that I can line up my bottom piece then tack down the top of the side and just slide the rest of that backing out. I found that that made it a whole lot easier than removing all of the tape backing pieces and trying not to get it stuck on my piece, if that makes sense. Um, for the top, it's not so bad because it's already in place and you don't have to worry about accidentally tapping something down or getting tape 
um, like the edge of the tape over top of your work or anything like that. So that's just what works best for me. Um, I mean, you do you, right? So then you just close it up like a book, press all of the sails down, and your mechanism is basically done. It is super easy. I find interactive dies from Lawn Fawn. I've said it a million times, and I'll probably say it a million more. They're super, super well put together. Like, I don't know who they have over at Lawn Fawn, Lawn Fawn Studios or Lawn Fawn Land or whatever it is that they call their, their main office where all the designing happens, but these people are brilliant. Um, for my background, I decided I was going to use a piece of the green nitpicky paper. It wasn't as holiday e green as I wanted, but I thought it would complement my two apples inside very nicely. And I just cut that out with the largest of the small stitched rectangle dies. And then I am going to add some string to my pull. And it's just Baker's twine that I had in my stash. Um, two loops all the way through just loop it out and then on the top of that I'm going to use a stamp from this interactive set and I think it's called push me or pull me and I'm going to use the one that says slide me right on the top and again stamping that with the memento tuxedo black ink and right over top it fits perfectly on my little one by one inch block and then we're going to mount that to the front but before I do that, I'm going to want to stamp on the inside. I want to finish off the inside of this card. I know I don't do that a lot. Sometimes I do it after the video is done and my blog is posted. And I'm like, oh, that'd be so clever on the inside, but I forgot to do it. So this time I'm using the one of the greetings from Sweet Christmas, which is a really old um, gingerbread house builder set from Lawn Fawn. And it was originally one long sentiment and I just cut that up so that I could stack them. And so I'm going to put that in my Misty and then I'm going to stamp that down again with the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. Um, I'm not doing any Copic coloring on the inside, it's just the black ink that I happen to have. I tend to use that one for pretty much everything. Um, which is handy, right? Because then you don't have to have like a million different black inks. I mean, I do have probably six different black inks. <laughs> and I, don't even, I don't even know why. One for water coloring and one for Copic coloring and then one for like I've got the Versafine and I mean oh, It just needs an all-encompassing all-in-one black ink. That's perfect for all the things And then I took the candy apple and I did third generation stamping on that just so it was faded um, Just for a little bit of decoration on the inside and then I'm going to use my dollar store mounting tape on the back of this just because I find if you have a little bit more space to grip the pull slider it's more likely to last longer like you don't want to make this difficult for your recipients right and then I'm going to take some studio Cadia gems here and I'm just gonna scatter the green ones and the red ones all about the front of the card and I adhere those down with Rangers multi medium matte adhesive and I don't know about you guys but I have found lately and I don't know if it's my weather but my adhesive the multi matte medium or medium matte is separating like I have to shake it and then I have to like squeeze it out and it's all like super clear and I don't know if that's good or if that's bad or if it's too cold in my art room I just I just have no idea and then I'm going to place my gems with my little DIY quick stick toothpick picker up gem thingy that I had made before. We had talked about that in a previous video. And it is still the same one. Like, <laughs> it's genius. It cost me like, I don't know, a hundredth of a cent to make. <laughs> and I did, I recently got an actual Marvy quick stick tool. And I like this one better. I don't know why. Um, the adhesive on this is starting to get a little little gunked up so it might be time to swap it out for a new one that I have sitting in the blue sticky tack stuff on the side um, but so far it's been great so that is basically going to be our card for today you just pull it up and it slides like magic so people over at Lawn Fawn are just brilliant which is probably why they get so much of my money <laughs> so they keep coming out with stuff I'll keep buying it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and throw me a comment down below. I love hearing from everybody and I appreciate 
you all so very much. Have a great day. Bye.